Hi guys and welcome back to the fourth video on SumPy. In this video we are finally going to do something useful with Python, namely solving equations. So if you have not seen the previous video, you can click now up in the right corner where you can find the entire SumPy playlist. So as always, I have imported SumPy as SP in the beginning of the document, and I have also defined some symbols which we are going to use, namely X, Y, and Z. So make sure this cell here actually have been run in Jupyter Notebook. The first theme of this video is defining equations. In mathematics, we often use the equal sign to define an equation, for instance, x squared equals 5. However, the equal sign in Python is already used to be variable assignment. Hence, we cannot use it for defining equations. You could have thought that, well, then I can use double equal sign, but this is also used in Python for Boolean comparison. So instead, we need to use the equation class constructor to make an equation. So let's do this now. So I want to define this equation up here, x squared equals 5. So I will write eq equal sp.eq for equation. So then, first of all, I take in the left-hand side, which is x squared, and then the right-hand side, which is 5. And let me also print this out like this. And now I have the equation x squared equals 5. And let me also just check the type of this equation here. And we get that this here has the class equality from the SumPy package. This is all well and good, but now comes the key point, which is how do we solve this equation here using SumPy? So the way to do it is to use the solve set function. So here I can write sp.solve set and then my equation and just run it. So what you see here is a set containing the two roots minus square root of five and the square root of five. So the type of this is always a set. That's why it's called solve set. So we can actually check the type, type dot, and let me just copy this line here and run the cell. And what you see is that this here is a finite set, which inherit from the set class in SumPy. I should remark that in the case that eq has, for instance, one unknown constant and one variable, then you can give in here the variable. So in this case, we only have one variable x. So we can write eq comma x and then run this cell and we will get the same thing out. So I prefer this way of writing it because here we have stated that we want to solve for x. So let's try now and take this set and just extract the first zero. What I want to do now does not work for all sets, but in the case that you have a finite set like this one, we can use the list constructor on the set to get back a list. So I can write list and then my set and run the cell. And now I have a list with two elements. And since we have a list, we can take out the first element starting at zero. And now we get back the square root of five. A final remark before we move on to the second example is that if we only wanted to solve the equation x squared equal five, then we can do this in a much simpler way. So if we rewrite it so that we have zero, so if we rewrite it so we have zero on the right hand side here, then we can instead of taking the equation in, we can only take in an expression. So I can also write solve set x squared minus five comma the variable x. And here we get out the exact same thing. So if we want to solve this equation in a very quick and dirty way and not using it anywhere else, then you can do it this way or even shorter, remove this part here. In the second example, I will try to solve a trigonometric equation. So let me write my equation and let me call it eq2, sp.eq. And my equation is going to be cosine of x minus sp.sine of x. And I want to set the entire thing equal to zero. And let me also give out the equation. 
So here is the equation I want to solve. So again, we can just take it inside the solve set function. And what we get out is this infinite set. So here we get all the roots of this equation here. So above here, we got that in the previous case, we ended up with a finite set. In this case, our set is not finite. So let us check the type again. And here you see that you have a set and you have also a union of two sets because of the union symbol here. My final example when it comes to solve set is that you do not always get out something useful. For instance, we can have an equation which is not solvable symbolically. So let me define such an equation, eq equal, and the left hand side is going to be cosine of x, and the right hand side is simply going to be x, and the solution to this equation can only be found numerically. So let's try to solve it with the solve set method. And let me also give it a name, eq3, for the third example. I forgot to run this now. So here we get an answer, which is that the solution of this equation is the solution of this equation. So it does not solve it for us. But anyway, we get a conditional set back, so all x, such that this condition is whole. And we can also see the type of this set. Let me just copy it and paste it down here. So here we see that it's a set, but it's also a condition set here. So if we want to solve this equation here, let me also just print it out. Then you would need to do it numerically. So for instance, you could use NumPy or something similar to find the solution of this equation. So this was how to solve one equation. So let's say that we have a linear system of equation. What do we do now? So let me just define some equation. And let me set it to be equal to sp.eq x comma three times y plus set. And let me also just give it out like this. And let me define a second equation to equal And let me also print out this equation. Okay, so here we have two linear equations. So let's say that we want to solve it. So what we can do is to use the linsolve method. So this function can, for example, take in a list of equations and the variables you want to solve it for. So let's do lin eq1 for the first equation lin eq2 for the second equation so and write it as in a set here and in the second variable we write all the unknowns so in this case x y and set so let us just run this cell and i have a typo yes i have written it wrong eq lin eq lin, run it, and here we have the solution. So in this case, set can be an arbitrary number, so we end up with this line here being the solutions to these two equations. So this was all I wanted to say in this video. So if you like it, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more SumPy content. So Eirik will see you next week for more SumPy.